us all create all different mosques and all different spaces because we all speak different languages and we're all going to argue when it comes to the time of niyaz this food is too dry, this food is too bland, this food is too spicy, this sweet is too sweet, this sweet is not sweet enough. If we begin to segment into all of these sorts of populations, then in reality, what can we achieve in terms of making differences? It's about taking those theories being presented by the Ahlul Bayt and at the end of the day, being ready to practice them. Today, for instance, we live in the United States of America. The followers of Ahlul Bayt are a number that is so minute, we in reality probably can't even state for sure how many in number that we are. We talk, for instance, that the population of Muslims within this country is about 3 million Muslims in the United States, meaning 1% of the population. Followers of Ahlul Bayt, if we were to take, for instance, 10% of that 3 million, 300,000, right? Not that much, right? So we come forth and we see that one step that we need to make as followers of Ahlul Bayt والسلام, is being able to engage our numbers, the numbers that we are in such a minority and being able to work with other institutions so that we're able to make real differences. Number one, for instance, if we go ahead and take this one ten percent of 3,300,000, right, or 30,000, 300,000 people, right, all across this country, and then we begin to segment them. This is the Pakistani community. This is Khoja community. This is Iraqi community. This is Iranian community. This is Afghani community. And let's all create all different mosques and all different spaces because we all speak different languages and we're all going to argue when it comes to the time of niyaz. This food is too dry. This food is too bland. This food is too spicy. This sweet is too sweet. This sweet is not sweet enough. If we begin to segment into all of these sorts of populations, then in reality, what can we achieve in terms of making differences? At the end of the day, if the goal is Qur'an and Ahlul Bayt والسلام, then we need to start breaking down barriers for real. And I believe me, I get it. I'm Hoja, right? I get it. I get the importance of culture. I'm going to get in so much trouble. I, I get the importance of culture. I get the importance of language. I get the importance of a specific you know, restriction when it comes toward food or in other terms of events and so on and so forth. But at the end of the day, the community is moving at a pace that's far faster than our cultural backgrounds. So in 10 years, what's gonna happen? And then in 20 years, what's gonna happen? And then in 30 years, what's gonna happen? If every single day we continue to focus on this initiative of building communities that speak this language is or solely ethnocentric, what's going to happen in 30 years? What's going to happen in reality? And every single one of you deep down, my dear brothers and sisters, uncles, you all know it, that nobody's going to be coming to the mosque. Because the language has been so stressed that people are going to go find other places where they can vent, where they can have other avenues, or they're going to be sitting on YouTube and watching the Majanis at home every single day instead of coming to the gatherings. Now, I know we have Majlis here in English at MFI throughout the entire, you know, I'm talking about this community, I'm talking about larger, right? The poetry needs to be in English. The ma'atam needs to be in English, right? The food needs to be like cheeseburgers and pizza, right? Because it's too spicy for some people. But not right now, but in 10 years, in 20 years, in 30 years, because again, that's the reality of where we're heading to, right? So we need to start thinking in this regard. Furthermore, we need to come forth and we begin to need to break those barriers between cultures, not only in regards towards spaces, but in regards toward marriages, for instance. Ahlul Bayt, alayhim wassalatu wassalam, the uh, seventh Imam al Kadim, Imam Ali ibn Musarrada, Imam al Jawad, Imam al Hadi, Imam al Askari, and Imam Sahib al Zaman, Ajjal Allah Ta'ala Faraja, alayhim wassalatu wassalam, Allahum sallallahu alayhi According to our traditions, every single one of their mothers come from sub-Saharan Africa. Every single one of their mothers. Imam Sahab al-Zaman, there's another narration that she comes from a Roman princess. The stronger narration, according to Adama, is that her mother also comes from sub-Saharan Africa. The Imams of Ahlul Bayt, they didn't segregate, they didn't discriminate against who they were going to marry, for instance. Means there has to be an institution that's founded again within this framework of Quran and Ahlul Bayt. We need to push that sort of ideology forward. Furthermore, we come and we see, for instance, that this notion again in terms of inclusivity, of being receptive toward people who were not Muslims before, reverts and converts, and not only telling them that look, this is a space for you. 
and you know, we'll give you books and you can come and pray here. But we need to think deep down. I don't have the answer, but we need to think deep down in terms of what mechanisms that we need to put into place in order to be at their support. Because they're certainly there during the time of Ahlul Bayt And again, the Rufadayn of Ahlul Bayt is one. The second thing is practicing what Ahlul Bayt practiced. And that brings me toward the next stage. Ahlul Bayt والسلام, as we know, the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Imam al Hassan al-Mujtaba and Baqir al-Sadiq, when they saw the difficulties and the obstacles of, and the trials and tribulations of certain minority groups within their communities, they would go out of their own selves toward coming to their support. Specifically whom? Women who are divorced or widowed and orphans within the communities. What are we doing in terms of building out institutions for those sorts of individuals within our communities? Again, these are things that we need to think about because that's what it means to put into practice what Ahl al-Bayt have practiced during their days. It's not only about building mosques, having majadis, distributing niyaz. It's about doing things that are bigger because we need to understand the fact that a lot of people are doing it in the names of a lot of different people. Why is there no, for instance, domestic violence shelter in the name of Ali ibn Abi Talib? Why, for instance, do we not create a mechanism? Do we not create, for instance, an institution that combats sexual harassment and sexual violence in the name of, say, the Shahada al Hussein? Why are we not moving beyond the bubble that we're living in? Not you, but in general in terms of actually carrying out that which Ahlul Bayt والسلام, worked so hard toward carrying it out within their capacities. What are we doing? Where is our vision? Just an opportunity to sit back and contemplate during these days, as I said, because they have to be a means to motivate us and to empower us so that we're going out and making that difference. Again, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states, Kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrajat nas." You are the best of people. You are the best of Ummah. Why? We gave you the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah alladhi ja'alana min ummati Muhammad. What an amazing blessing that we have a role model like Rasulullah Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. What an amazing blessing that we have a role model like Ali ibn Abi Talib whose title that we cry over is Aban Aytam, the father of what an amazing role, role model that we have in Sayyid al-Shuhada al-Hussein alayhi salatu wasalam, that others take inspiration in terms of a stand for justice. Yet we commit acts of injustice toward our spouses and toward our ch children on a day-to-day -day basis. And we do la'an of Yazid one day, and then we act like Yazids with our families and with our communities the next day. We need to be in a state of reflection, of contemplation during these days again so that we're able to utilize the light that we have been recipients of during these days of Majalis and begin to reflect about how we can make differences 